happy end of the week and thanks for coming back so mm -hmm, this girl that orders everything online is going to talk about Canada Post and the strike and why they're striking and why it makes sense so you're all wondering right why are they striking do they just want more money no it has nothing to do with money at all it has to do with them wanting better hours wanting better roots the seniority thing there plays a huge thing so if you've been there for a really long time you don't necessarily have to put in all the hours but if you're just new and you're starting out you kind of get called a lot and they all realize how unfair that is but I'm bringing this up. I mean, one, people just don't understand what it is. And two, I talked to my mail lady this morning because, I mean, I get mail every day. And um, the government is most probably going to force them back to work um, on Friday. So you're probably wondering, like, why can they, right? Well, that's one of the reasons why they did a rolling strike where certain parts of the country would strike while other parts worked. Because I think a few years ago they did a complete strike or nobody did anything. But because postal service is an essential part of how the world works, they the government can make them go back to work. Mostly from the fact that they are a crown corporation. They are owned by the government of Canada. And so the rolling strike was part of them not being forced back to work so they could protest. Now the acceptance and going back and forth no one's ever gonna get what they want so i don't know how that's gonna end but they are gonna eventually get forced back to work but again a lot of people are asking why are they striking and and do we really even need canada post <laughs> the answer is yes we definitely do need canada post and i'll get to that in a few minutes <clears throat> but again why are they striking they want better hours they want more time i mean my best friend, I mean, we, um, her significant other works for Canada Post. And I mean, I remember the calls last winter of her freaking out. I mean, her significant other would leave for work at eight o'clock in the morning and not get home until nine or 10. And we're delivering packages and, and mail all day long. And this one day it was super, super cold and she couldn't reach her and she was you know, upset. And I mean, Anybody out there would be upset if, if your significant other had been out in the freezing cold for at least the past 12 hours and you kept calling their phone and you couldn't get, you know, they wouldn't answer. Um, it turns out that, you know, her phone had frozen because it was, is that cold? I mean, they have older trucks, yes, but they have the new ones. But either way, I mean, the trucks kind of just hold the packages. They walk from place to place to place and they can kind of drive, you know, the packages in the mail so they don't have to carry so much on them. But there's no way that those those trucks keep them warm. They're, they're in there for like five or six minutes at the most. So when they're freezing cold in the winter and then you think about it, 12 hours out there when it's like those huge storms where like most of us have a hard time getting to our car. I, mean, I take the bus, so I mean, I do have time to freeze, but you know, not the point. So they just want better, a better life because again, some of them work that many hours that they don't have time to see their family or their children. They, they get up and leave for work as their children leave for school and their significant other leaves for work. And by the time they get home, you know, family time is all over. The kids have eaten supper, they've done their homework, they're bathed and sometimes they're in bed. And so, yes, I mean, by getting what they're asking for, they're actually cutting back on their overtime. Therefore, they're actually taking a pay cut. So it's not about getting money. And it, it is dangerous, not just from the fact, like I said, that like you know, they're in the cold all the time. But they could fall in and get hurt or get hit by a car. I mean, this, we live in Moncton, you know, me and, and me. I don't know where all of you that are watching are from. But... I don't think it matters where the heck you are in this country. It all comes down to some people can't drive. Some people shouldn't be driving, but they are. And I mean, I'm not going to get into how many people, you know, drive illegally and whatnot. That's, again, for another day. But 
these people are, are walking down streets and they're side streets and they don't always have like sidewalks. And if they do, sometimes the sidewalks, they aren't in very good condition. I remember a few years ago, we didn't get mail for like four or five days and I called. Now this was before the YouTube days, but I mean, I've been ordering things online for years. And it turns out that my mail person fell on a sidewalk and broke the foot. And it took them a few days to try to find a replacement mail person for our mail person. So it's not exactly the safest thing to do when you're trying to hurry and get things done. The roads and sidewalks have the potential of you falling and hurting yourself. You have the potential of being hit by a car and all sorts of things. So it's not exactly the, the safest job in the world either if you don't pay attention, you know. They have to pay attention to what they're doing but they've got so much stuff to do that paying attention to their own safety and doing what they're supposed to do, it, it gets kind of a lot. And I mean, where I lived before, again, I was very close to my male lady. I mean, she was one of my friends. And sometimes she would tell me like, that they can't decide how they want them to deliver their mail for a while. It was, you know, do your own route, you know, do your own thing as long as you get everything done. And then all of a sudden they would come in and they would give them a specific route that to follow and they would take it away a week later. Sometimes they would make them package all their, their bundles of mail in a certain order. So that takes them time before they can actually go out and deliver mail. And then like the next day they're like, oh, never mind, do whatever you want. So even like Canada Post themselves have no idea how to deal with the crisis is what I'm about to get to. About how we need Canada Post, right? I hear all of you. I see your posts where you're talking about Canada Post is going to strike themselves out of a job. Or we don't need Canada Post anymore. Like, why are we still paying them? Well, let me tell you one thing. The reason why Canada Post is striking, you know, they have all sorts of things. There's a lot of reasons in there. Before we get there, though, let's address the fact that we do need Canada Post. Because our other options are like FedEx, UPS, you know, DHL, any kind of delivery system. And has anybody ever tried to like send a letter through FedEx or, or you know, that kind of stuff? That shit's expensive, dude. Yeah. They can charge whatever they want because they're private companies. So if we were to get rid of Canada Post and simply just use FedEx or UPS or, you know, those other delivery systems, for delivering mail and everyday things, they could technically charge whatever the heck they want. Because there is no real regulation on how to charge for a letter. You know, they usually deliver packages and that's one legislation, but when for like a regular letter where you want to send your bill or you want to send, you know, somebody a birthday card, there, there's no legislation for them as per price. Because the legislation for that to not be, you know, overly priced happens to be in the Canada Post part. So if we eliminate Canada Post and we just open the doors to these other companies to just send our regular parcels and our regular mail, like a birthday card or a Christmas card. Christmas is coming. Exactly. Christmas cards and Christmas letters. At Christmas time is a time where, you know, people send family members that might not be close by, that don't speak to all the time. They'll send them like, you know, a Christmas card and sometimes they'll have like a, a bulletin or a recap of the year of what has happened, you know, like um, little Tommy passed second grade and um, little Alicia, you know, won in her pageant and she did very well at, um, you know, playing the flute and whatever the heck's going on in their lives, right? They keep the whole family updated of what's going on because Canada is a, a big country from coast to coast and it's... Again, we don't have the population in the middle. Um, to, so we don't always get time to, to see each other as we should. So they tend to use it you on know, Christmas time as a way to recap for the year and let the rest of the family know what's been up with them. So we send those things through Canada Post and uh, it costs two, three bucks, I guess, depending on the size and the weight or whatever. Because the regulations for that price is sitting with Canada Post. But if we were to eliminate them, and send them all this through, you know, FedEx, UPS, and DHL, and all those other companies that could potentially pop up now if we were to eliminate Canada Post. Private companies, they could charge whatever they want. There's no legislation for that. And for them to sit down and actually write the legislation is pointless. 
because it already exists in Canada Post. So yes, we do need Canada Post. And did they mess up at one point? Yeah. And whose fault was that? Harper. Straight out. It was Harper's fault and he knew it because he kept it hidden for two years before he told people about anything. So yeah, he didn't tell anybody about anything. So there are many, many stories that you can find um, through this. I'll link one to the bottom. But in 2014, now I have notes, okay, notes. In 2014, Harper signed a deal with China and it was called the Foreign Investment Promotion and Protection Agreement. And it's called FIPA for short. Now, what does all that mean? And what does that mean for Canada Post? It means nothing good for Canada and a lot of good things for China. So I will let you guys read up on it on yourself if you want, because it has more than postal stuff in it. And it just basically lets China invest in Canada, make money off of Canadian assets, but we can't do the same thing with them. So they're making money off of us. And it took Harper two years to let people know about it because I think he was kind of waiting for the re-election. And um, once he told people about it, it was kind of too late because it was a 31-year deal. Yes, it was signed, sealed, and delivered. And Trudeau can try to do what he wants now to try to fix the problem. But the fact of the matter is a contract is a contract and they're signed in there for 31 years. Now, let's get to what it means to Canada Post. In a nutshell, it means that for the next some years, I'm not good with math, but you know, 31 years after 2014, Canada Post, when they receive mail from like regular China, anything, they don't get paid. They don't get paid. Now, I hear y'all going, no, that ain't true. And I've been trying to find like that specific part of the deal online and it's really hard to find. But I mean, I confirmed it with my mail lady this morning. And two, my own landlord, who wasn't the nicest guy in the world, was a nice guy when he was getting what he wanted. So when he was getting what he wanted, when he was getting along, he would just talk for hours and hours and hours. And he is a Canada Post employee and has been for 25 plus years. So he's the one that told me about it. So they made this deal where, and I think there was a payoff. I do believe there was an $81 million payoff in this deal where for the next 31 years, anything that is mailed from China, Canada Post doesn't get any money for it to be delivered to anyone. So if you, you order things from wish.com, you know, AliExpress, um, Amazon that comes from China, which I'm guilty of. I mean, I get all my stuff there. It's cheaper. But we wait like months and months and months. Yeah. One, everything has to run through the CBSA, which is the Canadian border, whatever, you know, border customs agents. And you guys would not believe the amount of drugs they intercept. It's crazy. I'll try to find, again, the article where it talks about how much actual drugs they intercept where people try to just mail drugs to Canada. So because of that, mostly anything coming overseas, every single thing needs to be scanned and looked at through the border agency. So that takes time. So again, when Harper made this deal, they're in the process of cutting down, you know, jobs here and there because these are federal employees. I'm trying to save money. <clears throat> Cut a lot of their jobs off because they were telling everybody, you know, Get your e-bill, get your statements online, get this, get that. I mean, that's fine. And for a while, I mean, I can speak to this because I worked at Bell at the time when it was happening. Bell decided to give a fee, you know. We're gonna just going to charge you $2 if you want to have your paper bill. That fee is just a made-up fee for them to make money, to incite you to take the e-bill. Um, I think now that's, that's gone because it's technically illegal or something. I don't know the real, real legislation, the real the rules behind it, but they're not allowed to do that. And if you don't want to pay for it, you shouldn't have to. Because you don't have to have an e-bill. That, that's a choice. One, some people don't have computers. Some people do, but aren't, you know, I mean, some people are just old school and they just want a physical copy of their bill. 
Sometimes people run small businesses and they need those copies and it's a lot easier to just have the mailed copy to put in your file folder when it comes to tax time and all that kind of whatnot. And if they try to go dig through emails to try to find the receipt or the bill. So yes, people still have bills and stuff delivered in the mail. I mean, that's okay. And there's certain things that need to be delivered through the mail. Um, I mean, I'm doing things with no holds barred. And again, what I do to help people is between me and that person. None of you get to hear or know about it because that's not my point. My point isn't to go off and not helping them, but some things happen to be on a legal point and anything that's legal and binding needs to be sent to you by mail. Now, anybody watch Pineapple Express? Because if you haven't, where have you been? <laughs> but, you know, the job, Seth Rogen's character's job was that, you know, he delivered, what's it called? All right, it took me a few minutes to remember. He's a process server. So I'm not too sure how this works in Canada, but in the United States, when you want to serve somebody with papers, you have to get them to admit who they are. And then as soon as they say it, you give them the paper and you say you've been served. So they can't go to court and say, well, I never got my court papers. I didn't know I was being sued or whatnot. Um, does it work that way in Canada? I, I don't think so. But they do have to mail you those kinds of things, though. Like if you have a summons to go to court for a speeding ticket or a parking ticket, those things get sent in the mail. So, yeah, we do need mail service. It's, it's never going to go away. And again, if we put our mail service into the private sector, God knows how much they're going to charge to deliver those things and we might end up paying more and it's not gonna happen okay it's not gonna happen Canada Post isn't going anywhere so yes people still need bills we still need things sent in the mail and then we still go back to this deal with Harper for 31 years so I mean I buy a lot of stuff online I'm done with wish <clears throat> I don't deal with wish at all anymore the customer service is horrible but I do deal with Aliexpress a lot um, I do deal with Glambot, which I have to say their customer service is very good. So I'll talk about the whole Glambot thing um, with my Sephora video. I don't know which one's going to go up first, the Sephora, a makeup haul, or this. Um, but there are some things that I did like. So Glambot has great customer service, and so does AliExpress. I'm poor. I'm living on a budget. I'll buy things from China. It doesn't matter. Like, we can't boycott buying things from China. And the deal's already been put in place and it's already said and done. So we just have to like kind of learn to deal with it, you know? But it's in there for like another 20 some years for sure. So with Wish though, again, you get this shipping, right? It says just pay for shipping and you pay like three, four bucks for shipping. So you might be paying Wish for your shipping, but none of that money is going to Canada Post because of this deal. They are pocketing it or they're paying China Post for it or whoever the heck they are. But none of that shipping money is making its way to Canada Post. So that's one of the big deals that Canada Post is frustrated with. And as consumers, some of us are as well, because some of our things get lost. Some other things never show up. Now, I've thrown everything away, but I will try to see if I have a picture of it, because I think I've talked about this before. Because, um, again, my old landlord worked for Canada Post. And... They have like barcodes and they're international barcodes that help mail, you know, when they get it through the country to know what, which part of the country it goes. So they scan the barcodes. And China Post is, is getting a little sloppy when it comes to, to things. Because with Canada, again, they have that agreement where China, there's, there's no rules. And the barcodes aren't that easily scanned so that it turns out that a lot of things have to be scanned by hand so that's taking extra time so here in new brunswick there's an even extra harder part than just that barcode they have to write your postal code and the font that they're using in china post the e because everything in new brunswick starts with e the e that they use looks very very similar to the E for like Euro dollars, it doesn't really look like it's, it's rounded off. Again, if I can find a picture of one from way back, I'll put it in here. So when that goes to the scanner down, you know, in Richmond, where 
everything that's where the port is everything that comes from china comes through richmond the scanner doesn't recognize that as an e it doesn't recognize that it needs to be in the new brunswick pile because it doesn't look like an e to the computer it looks like an and not a character because computers only know what we tell them and that would mean you know do they reprogram it why why would they they're, they're already at a loss already and and you know why fix something that ain't broken because it's broken from the china side because they don't have to because again harper made a deal it all falls back to him i mean that's where i'm going with that but so things from wish i mean canada post isn't getting paid anything and they cut down a lot of jobs because they thought everybody was going to go to you know e-bill and companies were enticed by charging for paper bills to, for everybody to switch to e-bills and guess what wish.com came and hit you in the face and everybody was like whoa four dollars for something that i can buy here for 20 sure so that e-commerce industry has taken off and it's not gonna stop anytime soon so canada post now has a bazillion parcels to deliver because anybody who's bought from them knows that everything comes in it's an individual package you can make an order through you know amazon alex all those places from china they're all different sellers so you get them all in different packages even though it's one big order they have to deliver every single one of them they have to scan them they have to look at them make sure there's no drugs in them make sure there's nothing illegal and sometimes when you order stuff like i've got things that i've ordered that i've never gotten and from all the research and from the questions that I ask, it comes down to sometimes the material that it's made out of, you know, that I'm buying. It's not necessarily the drugs they're sending me. It's just that the material that whatever the heck I was buying is made out of happens to be something that is not allowed in Canada. There's certain kind of wood things that aren't allowed in Canada because it may contain some kind of like beetles or or diseases of some kind that we don't have in this country so to not have you know not to introduce bad things into our country that we don't need they can't put it through it gets destroyed right away there's regulations about how much you know things can be in plastic like we you know the whole thing that we heard about like bpa plastic bottles that it wasn't good it gives you cancer that's that's totally true but again if you buy something from china they don't have those same regulations there. They kind of whatever they want to do. Um, so same thing for like the makeup stuff. I've already told y'all, be careful what you buy from the internet. So buying makeup from the internet, I would trust this brand and I trust this brand. No problem trusting those brands because they actually have a real website where you can look them up and they do have their policies. And if you look on here, they both have their cruelty-free bunny ears. Um, now, for our product coming from China, that's great because in China they can do whatever the heck they want. Um, but to sell a product with a cruelty-free bunny ears and not actually be cruelty-free, there are huge, huge fines for that. And the fines don't necessarily come from Canada. They come mostly from the United States, even more now that California has passed the Cruelty-Free Beauty Act. So they would i mean they don't know when they sell this when they package this if it's going to go to canada if it's going to move to sweden or if it's going to move to the united states so in all if they have that you know bunny cruelty free thing it's it's definitely okay but not everything that you're going to buy the knockoffs and all that kind of whatnot that you're going to buy all have the cruelty free they're not all from these companies they're not all from these companies you don't know what you're getting so once they get you know to the canada border agency sometimes they have to test them but it's still turns down that some things I've never received because most probably the material that it was made out of or maybe the stuff that was in the makeup not that I bought other than this but not, it might have things that are illegal in Canada because when it comes to like buying no-name stuff makeup on the internet there could be everything down to asbestos and like cancer lead I mean anything could be in there but the Canada border agents actually test for that kind of stuff so they're keeping us safe but it takes them more time and so it takes us longer to get things and it takes Canada Post longer to deliver those tiny little packages. And then there's the customer service side where people call and yell at them because they've been waiting for their package to come from China for like two months and it's not here yet. 
when in reality the average allowed time for a package to come from China to be delivered in Canada is 165 days. That is a long time. But because of Harper's nice little trade deal, we have to wait. We can't do anything about it. We can't force them to send things faster. We can't force them to pay us because it's already been done. And that was a 31 year deal. So that in a nutshell is why I do support the Canada Post, what they're doing. I get it. But at this point in time, I do think they need to just cut the losses and, and find something because small businesses are suffering. I mean, some people are getting their bills. Whether you get your credit card bill in the mail or not, your payment is still due. And like I said, not everybody understands, not everybody has the computer, not everybody can go on there and check. And that's a bummer. I mean, the credit card company don't care that you're not getting your mail. They want their money anyway. So, so does, you know, your hydro bill or, or any kind of bill. So people are really starting to suffer. And I'm really, really mad because again, my smartwatch that I use as my fall arrest because I have a tendency to fall and I don't know why we're still working on that out, but I don't have the system. So, okay. All right. Side note here. Okay. As for, you know, medic alert stuff in New Brunswick, or, oh, Moncton. Anyway, we all have to deal out of the Moncton city hospital. We don't have the population. It's all dealt with them. We don't have enough people for other companies to come in. There's no competition. We can only go with one company. And they only have the in-home thing. They do have started to have a few of, you know, the ones that you can wear on your wrist to leave your house. But that costs something like $150 a month. Um, and, and there's an installation fee and all that kind of whatnot. And I have been approved by social development to have that put in. However, I decided that I didn't want to get it put in because I don't want to walk around with a big stupid, I mean, I'm 36, I still have a little bit of pride in myself. But I found out that I could use my smartwatch, which is why I saved up, that was half of the reasons why I saved up to buy that particular one. It has the app. If anything were to happen that I were to fall and I have that watch, that screen, like my big screen comes up, there's red and green. If it's just, you know, I'm fine, I just hit red or green or whatever. Anyway, I hit one of the buttons and it cancels it. But if I don't hit it on time, it automatically dials my sister and the other people on my list. And they call me back and it can talk through the watch. So if I've fallen, you know, I can tell them like, yeah, I'm, I fall, I hurt myself, call someone. Or I can say, I'm fine, you know, I fell over, but all right. Or if I don't answer at all, then they know something's wrong and they will call 911 for me. And that's completely free. So let's just go with the free part and me having my watch. But the update came through and broke the OS system. So I need to send it to Texas to get it fixed. And right now it's sitting in one of those trucks at the border, not doing anything. And I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And my four to six weeks time to get it fixed is now turning into 12 to 14 weeks, which in a way is dangerous. I mean, if I fall, how the heck am I going to let me know? With all, that, with all that said, I still understand the plight of Canada Post and why they need to have better working conditions. But striking this way, it's actually making it worse. They have more to deliver on the days that they are delivering. And most of them just want to stop. They want to go home. They want to see their families. They want to hear what their kid did in school today. They want to see their significant other. They want to have time to like, you know, Maybe have a beer when they come home from work or, or, or a cup of coffee or tea, whatever you do to relax. But right now they're so overworked, they don't have time. You know, they get up in the morning, they go to work, they come home exhausted, fall asleep, get up and do it all over again. So yes, they need better working conditions. Striking isn't the way to do it, but it all falls down to, in my opinion, Harper made a deal and he hid it from everybody for two years because by then we couldn't do anything about it. And it stuck there for 20 something years. So if you're mad at someone, be mad at him. Other than that, I don't know what else to say about the Canada Post strike. It's pretty cut and dry. They just want better working hours, better working circumstances. And you know, buy stuff from China. 
we can't get away from it. We're still gonna buy stuff there, but the deal was made with Harper. Be mad at him, not at everybody else. And other than that, I mean, there will be the Sephora and other makeup haul. I don't know what's going on first, this or the Sephora, I'm not too sure. Sephora should be here tomorrow. Uh, Cause it's sitting in Diet right now, by the way. It's sitting in Diet. They just have such a backlog that they haven't been able to process and put it out for delivery yet. Poor them, they work super, super hard. Um, but yeah, so thank everybody for your time and patience. Um, but yeah, come back. There'll be more about other things. If there's certain things that you're wondering, if I know a few things about, you know, ask, send them through. Don't worry about it. And please, thank you. Not a problem. I mean, I guess I'm supposed to say subscribe if you want, you know, sure. If you want, do whatever you want. I will try to link as many links as I can below about this whole deal. When it comes to the FIPA deal, there is tons and tons of articles written about it because it was kind of a big shocker that it had been hidden for the past two years and to find like every little inkling of it, you had to scroll through a lot of them. So I'm going to post a few and then if you want to, you can just, you know, Google it and look it up on your own. You know, think for yourselves a little bit. And with that, again, I'll let you go. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend. Come back the next time I post something. Not too sure what it's going to be, but again, send me ideas. Ask me questions. Do you have anything? I'm here. Thanks.